rêver un impossible rêve porter le chagrin so here are the two things that I should have learned by now that nothing lasts forever first of all second of all you cannot do everything by yourself that was the two things that that were the two things that I should have learned by now and I'm still trying to learn. Let me tell you a bit about myself. My name is Aisa Dalam. I'm from Mauritania. I was born in Mauritania from a lovely mother and a wonderful dad. I grew up in Cote d'Ivoire with a lovely family, very admiring, very loving, very loving, sorry, and very there for their children for everything they needed. I had wonderful friends, and you can recognize Mikaela here with the boo-boo from Mauritania. <laughs> so I had wonderful friends that I can today call family. My favorite singer is Jacqueline. He's a singer from Belgium. My favorite activity is painting. And during my spare time, my favorite thing to do, hobby, is wandering around museums by myself and also traveling the world with friends that I met all over the world. Let me tell you a bit about my country, Mauritania. My country is somewhere where people stereotype everything. My fellow Mauritanian, as you can see, is a more so you have ethnic, ethnic, ethnicities, different ethnicities. I'm a Fulani from Mauritania, and he is a Mo from Mauritania. So our diversity is one of our strengths. But when, when you say diversity, it also implies stereotypes, like everywhere in the world. So meanwhile in Mauritania, a young girl my age would be having a favorite, favorite activity we'll be doing will be uh, going to weddings, getting married, attending traditional ceremonies. Her favorite singer would be Maluma. She's a traditional singer in Mauritania, whom I love very much. So, I would define myself as a third culture kid. And I remember that yesterday one of our panelists was talking about being a third culture kid. This is how Mauritania perceived me. <laughs> and it's a very coincidence that I'm wearing also pink, by the way. It's not to match the poster. <laughs> so, being a told culture kid is very exciting because I grew up going to Cote d'Ivoire, Tunisia, France, Senegal, Canada, everywhere where my parents would go. But then coming back to Mauritania, where my heart is and my heart was all over, all the time, it was a struggle because I was a stranger in Cote d'Ivoire, I was a stranger in Senegal, I was a stranger in Canada, but I was also a stranger in my own country. So to me it was the biggest challenge of my life and I needed to find something to overcome that challenge because to me, going, growing up in Cote d'Ivoire, I was proud to tell my friends I am from Mauritania, yeah. even though they didn't know where Mauritania was, but I was, tr I was very proud to tell them that I am Mauritania. So it was really hurting to go back to my home country and my own people not recognizing me as their own. Even though, by the way, my parents really emphasized the fact that having strong roots is a very important part of somebody's development. So each holiday, they made sure that we go back home. This is how I perceived myself. While people saw me as a legally blonde in Mauritania, I, I was a proud African girl who wanted to achieve things and labeled them as a Mauritanian girl achieving things. But didn't, they didn't see me that way in my own country. So what I came up with, I was in North America where I was doing my undergrad and uh, after that I worked for three years 
The last year I was working in Canada before starting my grad school in the US. I was thinking that I needed something. Something that could just change the perception of my fellow Mauritanians about me. So I remember that with my sister, we would just uh, spend countless nights brainstorming. What could we do? So we went from, okay, maybe we should open a restaurant in Mauritania and call it Carnet de Voyage. I even remember. <laughs> because we wanted something, Carnet de Voyage, where we would serve food, but also have, just like today, you know, young Mauritanians come and just talk about many different subjects and just mingle. So we went from wanting to open a restaurant to maybe having something less formal because the restaurant was a demanding industry and I was not leaving in Mauritania. So I needed to think about something else. While in Montreal, I was a member of the Junior Chamber of Commerce of Montreal. And the Junior Chamber of Commerce was an excellent platform for young Canadians to just interact with business leaders, with the executives, with the fellow young Canadians, just to talk, have happy hours, or if they had business ideas, just to come and exchange ideas on how to implement them, on give, uh, having advice. And I thought it was an excellent idea, especially for a country like Mauritania. So I started writing the business plan, but then again, I need to, make, uh, to tell you that it had, it had been three years I didn't go back to Mauritania. So the last time I was there was 2008, and we're talking about 2011. So I wrote a business plan and planned a holiday trip to Nouakchott, the capital. So while writing the business plan, I was very inspired by the Junior Chamber of Commerce of Montreal, uh, the objectives, the, the vision, etc. But I also incorporated some elements that were, uh, that were very Mauritanian as well. What I came to realize is what was sitting on the business plan was completely different from what would be happening on the ground, of course. So after I drafted the business plan, went to my country, very excited, of course. I remember I was with my parents and we were uh, rehearsing how we would pitch the idea with all the enthusiasm, with the wit and the energy that I could have. And I, w I went to Mauritania went to the government officials and told them that I have this great idea. We have a young population, more than half of the population of Mauritania is under 25. So, I told them that it was a good time to have such a platform. They thought it was a great idea, so they gave me the red light, the green light up. <laughs> and I started talking to young Mauritanians just to have their vision, to have their feedback, because I thought it was important before, uh, before implementing it. But then, I realized that people were, take, were not really taking me seriously. It was just in their head, oh, she's that, that kid who lives in Montreal, coming home for the holidays and she thinks she can change the world. Look at her. She, does, she doesn't, doesn't even know how to dress Mauritanian. She doesn't even look Mauritanian. And <laughs> it was really hurting. They wouldn't, of course, say it to my face, but I would hear it afterwards. And trust me, I didn't come and try to impress her, with, impress them with the way I dress or with the way I speak or whatever, but just with all the, the optimism I had from writing this business plan and wanting to make a difference. That's it. But their reaction was really hurtful. So I had two solutions, two options. I could stop, go home, and tell my parents, you were right, <laughs> it was really difficult, I give up, I can't. But, because giving up is not part of my vocabulary, I decided to insist and convince them that they were wrong about me, that I was not just this bubbly Mauritanian who lived abroad and who wanted to come and show them that I could speak well English and dress well. That was not who I was. So resilience, it was key for me. I insisted, I felt, 
failed, failed again, went to present my ideas to my fellow Mauritanians and they would not listen to me. And it was really harmful. Sorry, I didn't So I had two solutions, two options. I can do it and nothing will stop me. Everybody thought that I would fail. They're like, come on, I said that. You're a young black Mauritian, you're a woman. Possible fiendre partir.